In the most recent restoration that I did, I came across these strange looking capacitors. One of those uh, Euro caps leak like crazy. This is a 0.01 microfarad, 200 volts or 500 volts DC. And the strange thing was that this thing had three legs. Um, here's another one. There were two on that radio. Now, it's, I've seen these before, um, but uh, this is the first time I've actually thought carefully about this. Um, when you first look at this, you might even think this is uh, two capacitors. You know, it's quite normal to have two capacitors in one where you have something like, um, you know, almost like the, the filter cans, which have two capacitors. And simply because they both normally go to ground, you have two capacitors in one. So that'll be lead one, lead two, lead three. Now that's quite normal um, on electrolytics, for example. And I have seen them uh, on these as well. In fact, I've seen them as um, the line caps, the so-called uh, death caps, uh, basically from your chassis to your neutral and your live. Some of the Sabas used to have them. Um, this one is different. Different because it actually doesn't measure a capacitance between one of the leads. So when you measure this thing, you measure a capacitance from across two of the leads, which should be, if it's working properly, it should be close to the rated capacitance. So let's have a look. This thing is giving us 71 nanofarads. Well, it's not quite there. This thing is a 10 nanofarad and I know these things were, were wrong because they were um, way overvalued. That's why they were replaced. But if you go across the other one, you get nothing, okay? Um, if anything, you might read a very, very low capacitance, like uh, 20 picofarads, 10 picofarads or something. This one gives us nothing. So what we are seeing here is different to the one we've seen before, the double one. What we're seeing here is a capacitor and then we've got something that's connected to another lead, which is not capacitively coupled or part of this capacitor at all. So you've got lead one, lead two, and lead three. This thing here is exactly how they draw this. They draw the capacitor and they draw a dashed line across here around it. And usually this thing then goes to ground. And usually also neither of these goes to ground. Okay. So when you have a capacitor, for example, coupling the, the output of one tube stage to the input of the other tube stage, neither of these is actually grounded. The capacitor is not connected to ground in any way. Now, the noise pickup in capacitors has been quite very well uh, covered by uh, Mr. Carlson's lab, who's got a video on where you actually, how you actually determine, like on a modern capacitor, which of these is actually the outside winding of the capacitor. So what you do then, you find out which one is the outside winding, if you can call it that, the outer layer of this capacitor, and you would solder that, say, to the lowest impedance point. In most cases, it'll be the ground. The other one would then go to your signal. In this case, you don't have any of them down to ground, and you may well need or require or wish for a shielding so that you don't have noise pickup on that capacitor. And that's exactly what this other layer is. You've got your capacitor, you've got a shield around it, and this leads to the shield and this goes to ground. So you're basically shielding your capacitor from noise. Now, I don't think you can get these anymore. If you get some old stock ones, they're probably gone way off spec anyway. So I had to make a couple of them for the last restoration. And some people asked me how I go about it. So I'm going to show you how I go about it now. And I've also made some improvements. Namely that in my view, if you're trying to shield this capacitor from, uh, from noise, you're actually doing half a job because what you have here is you've got this section is shielded and grounded, but these wires still pick up noise. Okay. 
So if you've got, say, this thing as a coupling cap between the anode of one section and the gate, or the grid rather, of the next one, you will get some pickup. And that is why you usually have a screen cable connecting to, say, the grid of the AF amplifier. In this case, what I've done is I'm going to make one of these a modern cap. This is a 10 nanofarad, okay? But I'm going to do it better than this one. And the reason is I'm going to shield part of the leads as well. In other words, before I build this thing, I determine how long I need the leads to be before they are solder points. Let's say the solder points are the last, say, centimeter. I need to solder it from there, say, to there. So by my logic, I should have the capacitor shielded as well as these leads shielded. And how do we do that? Well, I'll show you. The result is not the neatest you're going to see, but hey, it works. First of all, you need your capacitor and you need aluminum tape. Um, these things you buy, they're very cheap. You get aluminum tape and fortuitously, the amount we want to shield is, let's call it the width of that, let's call it the width of the aluminum tape, okay? That's what we want to shield, from there to there. It just makes it easier for us to cut the tape. So what we'll do is we'll cut a length of tape like that. Okay, leave that for a second. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this aluminum tape is not going to short to the pins, to the actual leads. So what we need to do is we need to put some um, heat shrink to the point where the tape is going to come to. So in this case, let me just use one I've got more of, and that's this one here. So I'm going to cut that piece off there, and I'm going to cut two of them. Now what we do is we just slide that in there, slide that in there, and you've got to make sure that you actually push it very close to the capacitor because you don't want that screen you're going to put on top to touch that lead at all, okay? Let's just shrink it. This is what you do with uh, cigar lighters when you don't smoke cigars anymore. So now we've got these leads protected, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our tape over the top. And we are going to then shield that section that we determined. In fact, we cut the tape a little bit too small, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut off a bigger piece of tape. Like that, okay? Now what you do is you try to peel this off. Right, we've got one corner off and we peel that off like that. And we're going to lie this capacitor in the middle there. And then we're going to carefully, carefully wrap that around. Okay. This is sticky as hell, this, this uh, tape. And then we go and wrap it a couple of times. This is uh, probably a little bit messier than I thought that I would like it to be, but this is for demo purposes. Let's cut that off, keep it straight. So we've got our capacitor shielded in the middle there. And then you just crimp these guys together. And your shield has now extended to that part of the lead.
Now you have to make very sure that that shield does not touch the, the lead and that one does not touch that lead. Now what do we do? Okay, we need to get contact to this tape. And the way to do that, just get some, this is a 0.6 millimeter silver wire, they call it. And what I'm going to do is just grab it like that. Do that a few times. Probably wind a bit there. Leave just enough for it to be considered a lead. And I can now test for continuity because the outside of that shield actually works as a good conductor. So if I touch that there, there we go. Now just to make it all pretty, I take some bigger heat shrink. And I'm going to cover that much of it. Just push it through. Probably need to twist because it's now a bit bigger than it should be. Out with the cigar lighter again. And there we have it. One lead, one lead, ground lead. So what we have now is we have a capacitor that is shielded from approximately there to there. And that shield is connected to this point here, which we will then connect to ground. Okay. You could leave it further out, but um, in this particular case, I'm using the actual capacitor as a connector. So the length just saves me having to put uh, another piece of wire at the end here. Um, and I've created my capacitor. Usually what you then do is uh, you should, just for uh, completeness, right here, zero point oh one, and it's 630 volts. There we have it. Done. Simple. Now, as I said, don't always assume that a three lead capacitor is a shielded cap. It could well be a dual cap, and I've seen them before. But if you do find a shielded cap, no great mystery. Just make one yourself. This is my way of doing it. I'm sure there are better ways of doing it, alternative ways of doing it. Um, you can make this shorter or longer. Uh, my logic is if you're going to shield the capacitor, you might as well shield that part of the connector that you're going to end up uh, using anyway. And it works a treat. The um, trick that uh, Mr. Carlson's lab shows us is how to determine which of the pins is the outer uh, layer of the, of the capacitor foil. And that's very, very worth it, very well worth it when you're using a situation where you want to connect one of these two to, to a low impedance point like a ground. Uh, I definitely would advise you to look at that. Mr. Carlson's lab, just go through his videos. You'll find it there with no problem at all. Hope this helps. Another, this is another one of the uh, restoration building blocks. I'll keep adding to them as I go along. Some things will be complex. Some things will be simple like this one. But they all help. And uh, sometimes the way you learn how to do something is you either see how other people do it 
or you find the 99 ways of not doing it and then hit on the right one, this method is definitely a lot better. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.